Hi everyone, welcome to Critical Thinking, and I am Cher Filler, your instructor, and welcome to my very first time doing video lectures. So hopefully this will go all right, um, but any feedback you may want to give me along the way will be greatly appreciated. First, let me just say that I would like you to, before you watch the rest of this video or read the notes on paper, I would like you to do the pretest which is under course documents in the portal. Please go there, open the pretest, save it on your computer, fill it out, save it again, and then upload it to the portal under that link. Then come back and listen to the rest of these notes, or, excuse me, um, read them in the uh, notes document. Also, I do want you to note that at the end of each set of notes, the specific assignments and due dates are spelled out in more detail than on the syllabus, so be sure to always read to the end. There are a few quotes I'd like to share with you. One is from a fortune cookie that I ended up saving for many years, and it says, if you do not run your subconscious mind yourself, someone else will. And then another one is from a great thinker, pioneer in the science of critical thinking, John Dewey. And he says, active, persistent, and careful consideration of any belief or supposed form of knowledge in the light of the grounds that support it and the further conclusions to which it tends constitutes reflective thought. And reflective thought and controlling our own subconscious are things that we are going to be trying to do in this class. So in this class, we will learn different ways of approaching the world around us. We will learn to see more clearly so that we can then think more clearly. We will learn what can go wrong with thinking so that we can learn to avoid the worst pitfalls. Most of all, we will do as John Dewey says and give active, persistent, and careful consideration to all of our observations and beliefs about the world. This will require some patience, open-mindedness, and sometimes even a little bit of risk in stating your ideas or questioning someone else. I hope that you will allow yourself to take those risks. One of the most important ideas of this course is learning to deal with uncertainty. A fellow critical thinking instructor, Bob Corbett, says, critical thinking begins in the problem of error. I say rather that it begins in the problem of uncertainty. The world and our lives in it are uncertain and this often makes us very uncomfortable. We want to know what is right and what is wrong. We want to know exactly where we stand and what we should do at any given moment, but we can't. I mean, really, we can't. And we need to accept that before critical thinking will make any sense. If we could know for sure, all we would need to do is look up the answers. But you know that doesn't work for the important issues in life. Should I buy this car or that one? Should I marry this person or that? Stay single, move to California. There are always pros and cons, and we always have to just look at them and make the best decision we can. There are situations in which there are answers, but those are rarely the ones we really wrestle with. See the handout entitled Three Kinds of Questions, which is posted under course documents. This course is mainly about dealing with question type three, conflicting systems. There's a wonderful word to describe a mental state that we all experience at times, which is an uncomfortable state of not knowing what to think. And it is called disequilibrium, being knocked off balance. Many, if not most people, deal with this problem by simply choosing things to be sure of. Catholic doctrine, patriotism, white supremacy, that Obama's the best president ever, president ever, once you've made the decision to be certain of that idea, it leads to certainty about other ideas and it makes life simpler, at least on the surface. Unfortunately, I believe such certainty makes the world a more violent place. I believe that many of the world's problems are caused by too much certainty. If you're certain that the West is evil and you will go to heaven by blowing yourself up to kill Westerners, then it's a small step to flying airplanes into buildings. If you believe that homosexuality is evil, 
then it's okay to be up and or kill gays. If you're certain that God gave the West Bank to Israel, then it is, of course, it's right to run Palestinians out of their homes and kill them. You know the rest. As you read, see, or hear about the problems of the day, think about which ones were caused by someone who thought he or she was absolutely right about something. Someone who acted unquestioningly on his or her beliefs. All this is to say that one of the biggest jobs of this class is to teach you to be uncertain and be okay with it. I'm not talking about being wishy-washy or being stuck in one place because you can't make a decision. I'm talking about productive, thoughtful uncertainty. Realizing that there is very little in life that is black and white, that there are very few occasions when you can say everyone, always, or no one, or never, but then learning, to, learning strategies to go on with life despite that uncertainty, learning to rely on your own trained minds to guide you, rather than following some charismatic leader simply because he or she makes it easy for you by taking away the uncertainty. Why do you think ordinary, good-hearted Germans were pulled in by Adolf Hitler? It was better than having to think about their precarious position in the world. This is something we'll come back to over the course of the semester, especially when we get to chapter 13. But the important thing to remember for now is that it is okay not to know the answers. In fact, realizing that you don't know is much better than feeling certain that you do know especially when you really don't know. Before you start on this week's assignments, which I explained below, you probably want to get familiar with the course information on the portal. Under course information, click on documents. There you will find the syllabus, which you should print out as it contains all the requirements of the course. It also contains my phone number, which you should use if for some reason you lose your computer capabilities. Otherwise, I won't know why you're not submitting work, and you will accumulate a lot of zeros. All the notes and assignments are posted. If I am going to make changes, I will do so via email. I expect you to check your NCCC email daily, or at least every other day. The schedule on the syllabus has the major readings and assignment due dates, but the assignments will be explained, and the readings and readings potentially added in the week's notes or by email, so don't just go by the syllabus. Please feel free to ask questions about anything by email or on the discussion page or by phone to me. Under course communications, you will find the discussion forum, which you will be asked to post to right twice a week. Be sure to read the syllabus regarding discussion page postings. You should actually write your post in Microsoft Word or whatever word processing program you're using and save it as a rich text file. Spell check and edit it and then cut and paste it onto the discussion page. To make an initial posting, click on the particular forum you are working with, then click on Add Thread, then paste in your posting. When you do this, you may find that some weird characters come through, but that's okay. The important things are that you can spell check and that you don't lose your work in cyberspace. When you are replying to someone else's posting, you should click post a reply. This way the program will order the messages in threads that are easier to follow. It's not quite as nice looking as Facebook, but it does essentially the same thing. Hopefully the discussion page protocol will become second nature within the first week and you will find yourself checking the forums often and responding to other people's ideas on a regular basis. Another note about discussion postings is that while they should be at least 450 words to get full credit, they should not be more than 550 words, and they should be well edited in terms of content as well as spelling and grammar. What I mean is that a posting should not be a random collection of ideas. It needs to be unified in some way to answer the week's questions, discuss the ideas of the reading, and ask your own questions in a logical way. In the space of one semester, we cannot complete all the exercises in the text the way they are presented. So I will ask you to think your way through the exercises the way you would if you had people with you to bounce ideas off. 
If you are not assigned a particular question for discussion, you will choose the one that is most interesting to you to explore in depth on the discussion page. As I mentioned above, don't be afraid of disequilibrium. Some of the things presented in this course may seem too obvious for words, i.e. dumb, and other things may seem totally incomprehensible. Be patient with the course and with yourself. Allow yourself not to know the answer. There is often no right answer, either on the discussion page or in any of the writing assignments. If you are truly thinking about things and turning them over in your mind and in your writing, and if you don't give up, even when things don't seem to make sense, you will do fine. In your responses, I am looking for thoughtfulness and thoroughness, as well as understanding. I am also looking for good editing, because I am an English teacher, and frankly, good editing is something that shows you care about the way you project yourself to the world. It's not just English teachers who care about that. Let's be nice to each other by allowing each other to play with ideas and even continuing the play with our own responses, but let's help each other identify flaws in our thinking by gently noting other possibilities. Okay, that's all for now. Please let me know if I can do something differently to help you learn better. Mostly, let's all help each other to become better readers, writers, and thinkers. I will see you online. But before I do that, check the week's assignments. Um, I'm not going to go over them in this video, but you can read them in the document that has these notes in it. And ask me if you have any questions at all. Email me if you have those questions. Okay? Thank you, and I will see you soon.